strikes. Red Ruffing checks the runner on second. He gets the sign from Vicky. Ruffing stretches. Ruffing catches. Oh, caught the inside corner. Stay right. One. Out of baby. Don't get right there, Red. Okay, one out. A man on second. Bottom of the seventh. Two balls. One strike. Ruffing checks the runner on second. He gets the sign from Vicky. Ruffing stretches, roughing pitches. Oh, low and outside, ball three. Come on, Red, make him a hit. No batter up there, and they're all the time, Red. Hey, please, my head is splitting. I told that boy 109 times. You, Jane, stop banging the wall. In a minute, Ma, this is for the World Series. One out, a man on second, bottom of the seventh. Three balls, one strike. Ruffing stretches, roughing pitches. Oh no, hiding outside. Jojo Moore walks. First and second, Melot gulps up to the plate. Can't he do that someplace else? Oh, Brett is on. That's where he'll do it. Eugene, I'm not going to tell you again. You hear me? Um, Melot is.
this up. It's a crucial moment in World Series history. Your brand plan to the splitting headache. I don't want him to stop playing. It's just the vein. He always does that when I'm studying. I have a big test in history tomorrow. One pitch, Mom. I think I can get him to pop up. I really have my stuff today. Your father will give you plenty of stuff when he gets home. You hear? All right, all right. Get in here now and put out the water glasses. I can do that. Why, is his arm broken? And I don't want any back talk. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Today's game will be delayed because of my Aunt Blanche's headache. <laughs> Blanche, that's enough sewing today. That's all I need is for you to go blind. I just have this one edge to finish. Lori, darling, help your Aunt Kate in the kitchen. I got two more pages, all right, Mom? I have to finish the Macedonian Wars. Always studying has my shoulders. Jean Morris Delon. It's the second worst name ever given to a male child. The first worst is Haskell Fleischman. How am I ever going to play for the Yankees with a name like Eugene Morris Jerome? You got to be a Joe, or a Tony, or Frankie. Only I was born Italian. All the best Yankees are Italian. My mother makes spaghetti with ketchup. What chance do I have? I'm almost through, Ma. All right, darling. Don't get up too quickly. Down to the beach. Very slowly, I hope. Yes, Ma. That's good. She gets all the special treatment because the doctors say she has kind of a flutter in her heart. I got hit with a baseball right in the back of the skull. I saw two of everything for a week, and I still have to carry a block of ice home every afternoon. <laughs> girls are treated like queens. Maybe that's what I should have been born. An Italian girl. You cheat! What? How many times have I told you no to leave your stuff lying around the house? A hundred and nine. What? You said yesterday I told you a hundred and nine times not to leave your things around the house. Don't be fresh to your mother, Jean. Was I fresh? I swear to God that's what you said to me yesterday. One day I'm going to put all this stuff in a book or a play. I'm going to be a writer, like Ring Lardner or somebody. That's if things don't work out first with the Yankees or the Cubs. Or the Red Sox, or maybe possibly the Tigers. If I get down to the same with your wife. Mom, can I have a glass of lemonade? We'll spoil your dinner, darling. Small glass couldn't hurt her. All right, in a minute, Angel. No, we'll get it. I'm going to the kitchen right now. Can you believe that? She better have a bad heart, or I'm going to kill her one day. <laughs> Listen, I hope you don't repeat this to anybody. What I'm telling you are my secret memoirs. It's called The Unbelievable, Fantastic, and Completely Private Thoughts of I, Eugene Morris Jerome, in this, the 15th year of his life, in the year 1937, in the community of Brighton Beach, Kings County, City of New York, Empire State of the American Nation. A roller skate on my kitchen floor. You want me dead. Is that what you want? I didn't leave it there. Get down here. No, Lori. my skull. I have a concussion. What would you tell your father if he came home and I was dead on the kitchen floor? I'd say, don't go in the kitchen, Pop. Get in! <laughs> you see why I'm going to write all this stuff down? In case I grow up all twisted and warped, the world will know why. He's a boy. He's young. You should be glad he's healthy and active. Before the doctors found out what Lori had, she was the same way. Never. Girls are different. When you and I were growing up, Ben and Ezra were the ones driving Mama crazy. And I've always been that way. I have to have things clean. Just like Mama. When they left the house in Russia, she cleaned it from top to bottom. She said no matter what the Cossacks did to us, when they broke into our home, they would have respect for the Jews. Who were the Cossacks? Same filthy bunch of across the street. You mean the Murphys? All of them. The Murphys are Russian? The mother is nice. She's been very sweet to me. Oh, when it was so filthy, I thought she had black curtains hanging. I was in their house. It was very neat. What business did you have to be over there? Oh, she invited me for tea. To meet that drunken son of hers. No, just the two of us. I've been living here now, what, what, seven years? She never invited me to tea. Because she knows your situation. Remember what Mama used to say. Stay on your own side of the street. That's what they have gutters for. That's what they have gutters for. If my mother knew I was writing all this stuff down, she would stuff me like one of her 
chickens. I better explain what she meant by Aunt Blanche's situation. You see, her husband, Uncle Dave, he died six years ago from this thing. They never say the word, they always whisper it. It was cancer. I think they're afraid that if they say it out loud, God would say, I heard that. You said the dread disease. Just for that, I smite you down with it. There are some things that grown-ups just won't discuss. For example, my grandfather, he died from diphtheria. Anyway, after Uncle Dave died, he left Aunt Blanche with no money, not even insurance. And she can't support herself because she has asthma. So my big hearted mother insisted we take her and the kids in to live with us. So they broke up this room into two small rooms. Me and my brother Stan live on this side, and Laurie and her sister Nora live on the other side. My father thought it would only be temporary, but it's been three and a half years so far, and I think it's because of Aunt Blanche's situation. My father's developing high blood pressure. Do you like some more lemonade, sweetie? Oh, thank you, Aunt Kate. Drink it slowly. I am. Blanche puts enough salt in today. Did someone have cough this morning? Ah, I was just jogging anyway. You'll sew your fingers together. I know you will. It's getting dark. I think I need new glasses. Our teacher says you should change them every two years. It would kill you to turn on the light. I don't have to run up electric bills. I owe you and Jack enough as it is. You see anybody starving around here? You see anybody going hungry? If I need something to eat, you'll give me something from your plate. Kate, I don't want to... I'll pay you back someday. I promise. From your lips to the Irish Street Six. Get in there. Take some soup, see if you need salt. Should I put out the water glasses, or is Eugene gonna do it? Yo, Jay! This is the last time I'm gonna tell you! Lose the napkin, sweet. With her condition, I have to do twice as much work around here. Boy, if I could just make the Yankees, I'd be in St. Petersburg this winter. Her sister Nora isn't too bad. She's 16. I don't mind her much. At least she's not too bad to look at. To be absolutely honest, this is the year I started noticing girls that weren't too bad to look at. Nora started developing about eight months ago. I have the exact date written in my diary. Mom, Lori, and Kate, I've got incredible news, everybody! Hi, Nora. Eugene, my sweet, adorable, handsome cousin. I can't believe this whole day. I felt the chest. When she grabbed me, I felt my first chest. I'm fainting. I'm absolutely fainting. What happened? Where's Mom? Aunt Kate, I have to tell everybody. Everybody inside for the big news. What's all the excitement? You were all red in the face. Sit down, Mom, because I don't want you fainting on the floor. Sit down, Blanche. Mom, sit down. You too, Aunt Kate. Everybody ready? Stop dragging it out. The suspense is killing me. Don't say things like that, Lori. Can I hear what the girl has to say? Go on. Okay, here it goes. I'm going to be in a Broadway show. It's a musical called Abracadabra. This man, Mr. Beckman, he came into our dancing class this afternoon and he picked We have to be at the Hudson Theater on Monday morning to audition for the dance director. But on the way out, he pulled me aside and said the job is as good as mine. We start rehearsing a week from Monday. And then the show goes to Wilmington and Philadelphia and Washington. And then two weeks in December, it comes to New York City. And there are nine big musical numbers. And there's going to be a, a big tank on stage that's filled with water that you could see through. Entire cast underwater. I mean, can you believe it? I'm going to be in a Broadway show, Mama. Uh, what is she talking about? Do I know? Am I your mother? How can you be in a Broadway show? Don't you have to sing and act? I can sing. No, you can't. A little. No, you can't. I can carry a tune. No, you can't. Well, I probably won't have to. They're just looking for dancers. On Broadway, you have to sing and act. How would you know? You've never been to a Broadway show. Did you tell him how old you were? He didn't ask me. He didn't ask if you were 16. He just asked me to audition. My God, isn't anybody excited? Well, I am. It's the most fantastic thing I've ever heard. Thanks, Eugene. At least somebody's excited. Next door to a show girl. From Philadelphia. School? Mama, this is a Broadway show. This is what I want to do with my life. Algebra and English isn't going to help me on stage. All right. Will you stay out of this? You mean not finish school? Not get a diploma? Do you know how hard it is today for a girl to get a good job without a high school diploma? But I've got a job, and I'll be making more money than 10 girls with diplomas. You don't have it yet. You still have to audition. Been broke a leg or got heavy. How long do you think they'll keep you? Dancing is just for a few years. A diploma is forever. I know. I never had one. How hard it is to find a decent job. And Kate knows. Tell her, Kate. It's very hard. 
think now. It's almost dinner time. Uncle Jack will be home soon. Well, we'll discuss it later. I have to know tonight, Mama. I have to call Mr. Beckman and let him know if I can go to the audition or not. Please let me go to the audition. At least, at least let me find out if they think I'm good enough or not. Don't say no until Monday. It was a tense moment for everybody. I love tense moments. I'm not the one they're all tense about. <laughs> well, God knows we can use some money. Uncle Jack, enough as it is, just to say in this as I do. How do you feel about it, Kate? Me? I never voted in my life. Why should I try with my own family? Then we'll leave it up to Uncle Jack. We'll let him make the decision. Why, Mama? I love him, but he's not my father. Because I need help. Because I don't know what the right thing to do is. Because I say so, that's why. Eugene and Jerome of New York cast one vote for yes. What I'm about to tell you next is so secret and private that I've left instructions for my memoirs not to be opened until 30 years after my death. I, Eugene Morris Jerome, have committed a mortal sin by lusting after my cousin Nora. I can tell you all this now because I'll be dead when you're reading it. If I had my choice between a tryout with the Yankees and actually seeing her bare breasts for two and a half seconds, I would have some serious thinking done. Eugene, I need bread. What? I ran out of bread and you just run down the bus to give me a first light bread. Again? I went to the store this morning. So you'll go again this afternoon. I'm always going to the store. When I grow up, that's all I'm going to be trained to do is go to the store. You don't want to go? Never mind, I'll go. Hey, don't do that. Don't make me feel guilty. I'll go. You get a quarter pound of butter. I bought a quarter pound of butter this morning. Why don't you buy a half pound at a time? Then what if the house burned down? Why do I need an extra quarter pound of butter? If my mother taught logic in high school, this would be some weird country. <laughs> Sid Luckman of Columbia waits for the snap from the center. The snow is coming down in the near blizzard. He gets it. He fades back. He passes. And Luckman's got it. Luckman catches his own pass. The one-legged bandits at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20. Touchdown. Columbia wins. They defeat the mighty Crimson of Harvard, 13 to 12. Listen to that crowd. Did you ask about 
the tickets. What tickets? For the Yankees game. You said your boss knew this guy who could get passes. You didn't ask him? Me and my boss had a, a few other things to talk about. I'm in trouble here. This really shocked me because Stan is the kind of guy who can talk himself out of any kind of trouble. What kind of trouble? I get fired today. Fired? You mean for good? You don't get fired temporarily. It's permanent. It's a lifetime firing. What happened? Well, it was all on a care of Andrew. The car guy who sweeps up? Well, he was cleaning the floor in the stock room. And he leans the broom and gets a table to put some stuff in the trash can. And the broom slips and knocks a can of linseed oil all over the table. And ruins three brand new hats right out of me. It wasn't his fault. He didn't put the linseed oil in there, right? Right. So Mrs. Stroll gets crazy. He says to Andrew, the hats are going to have to come out of his own salary. 27 bucks. So Andrew starts to cry. He cried? 42 years old, he's balling all over the stock. I mean, the guy doesn't have too much furniture upstairs anyway, but he's really sweet. He brings me coffee, tells me jokes. I never understand him, but I laugh anyway. He make him feel good, you know? Yeah. So I said to Mr. Storm, I didn't think it, I didn't think it was fair. It wasn't Andrew's fault. You said that to him? Sure, why not? So Mr. Storm says, were you going to pay for the hats, Big Mouth? So I said, no, I don't want to pay for the hats. And he says, well, we're in my mouth. Holy mackerel. So then Mr. Stroheim looks at me like machine gun bolts are coming out of his eyes. He sends Andrew over to the factory to pick up three brand new hats, which is usually my job. So then guess what he tells me to do? What? He tells me to sweep up. He says, for this week, I'm the cleanup man. Oh, I can't believe it. Everybody's watching me now, waiting to see what I'm going to do. Even Andrew stops crying and watch. I felt the stole was in my hands. So I grit my teeth and I grab the broom and there's this big pile of dirt right in the middle of the floor. Yeah. And I sweep it all over Mr. Stroheim's shoes. Andrew just finished shining them if you want to talk about irony. Oh, I'm dying, Stan. I'm actually dying. You can see everybody in the place was about to bust a gut. Uh, Mrs. Mulcahy, the bookkeeper, could hardly keep her false teeth in her mouth. Andrew's eye dragging five inches out of their sockets. Oh, this is the greatest story in the history of the world. So then Mr. Troy grabs me, and, and he pulls me in his back office, he closes the door, and then he puts the shades down. He gives me this whole talk about how he grew up in Germany to respect the superiors. That if they ever did such a thing as you do, they would beat me and death up until they carried me a pain. And you got it out perfect. And I say, yeah? Well, we're not in Germany, old buddy. You said that to him? No. Myself. I didn't want to go too far. I was wondering. So Mr. Schoenheim says that he always liked me, and he always thought I was a good boy, and he's going to give me one more chance. He wants a letter of apology in the morning. And if that letter of apology is not at his desk by 9 a.m., I can consider myself fired. I would have had a heart attack. What did you say? I said I wasn't going to apologize if Andrew still had to pay for the hats. He said it was between him and Andrew, and then they expected a letter from me in the morning. So I said goodnight. Walked out, grabbed my hat, and went home. Ten minutes early. Oh, I'm sweating. I swear to God, I'm sweating all over. I don't know why I did it. I just got so mad. This wasn't fair. I mean, if you give in when you're 18 and a half, you give in for the rest of your life, don't you think? Well, I suppose so. So what's the decision? Are you going to write the letter? No. Positively? Positively. Except I'll have to discuss it with Pop. I know we need the money, but he told me once, you always got to do what you think is right in this world. Stand up for your principles. Yeah, but what if he says he thinks you're wrong, that you should write the letter? He won't. He's going to leave it up to me. I know it. But what if he says, write the letter? Well, that's something we won't do until after dinner, will we? All in all, it was shaping up to be one heck of a dinner. I'll say this, though. I always had this two-way thing about my brother. Either I worshipped the ground he walked on, or I hated him so much I wanted to kill him. I guess you know how I feel about it today. Eugene, all day long it takes to bring home bread. I was home a half hour ago. I was talking to Stan. Hey, I got a letter from Rosalind Winery. Remember her? They moved to Manhattan. She lives up on Central Park West. Why not? Her father's a gangster, her mother's worse. I don't get a kiss alone. Nope. I was going to save it up for Christmas and give you a giant one. We don't have Christmas. I'll take it right now. Thank you. Hello, too? When do I ever get a hug? What'd you do wrong? You're too smart for me, Mom. I robbed a barber shop today. Is that why you're so tired going out with your 200 girlfriends all night? 130. That's all I have. 130. And you get your work done? I get it 
does. Your boss doesn't mind you being pious? No, he doesn't. Did you ask him about Thursday? What? You were going to ask him if you could get paid Thursday, so I can pay green light on Friday, because Saturday's a holiday. Oh, uh, no, I forgot. I'll ask him tomorrow. Well, if it's a problem, don't worry about it. Your boss is more important than green light. That's not true, Mom. My boss is not more important than Mrs. Greenblatt. Oh, my God. As if things weren't bad enough. And now this, the ultimate tragedy. Liver and cabbage for dinner. <laughs> it's a Jewish medieval torture. My friend, Monte Gregorio, he's an A student in science, and he told me that cooked cabbage can be smelled farther than sound traveling for seven minutes. If my memoirs are never finished, you'll know it's because I gagged to death one night in the middle of supper. You're all witnesses. I was sitting here, right? I'll get blamed for that, though. <laughs> Five 
still going to lay down and he's going to a Broadway show tonight. I packed every hat and noise maker I could carry in that box and walked out of there. At his funeral, I'll wear a pointy hat and blow a horn, the bastard. There's men in that temple who've been praying for 40 years. You know how long I have to wait till my turn comes up? You can't come up, but I have time for everybody. Hey, here's your water, Aunt Blanche. Oh, thank you, darling. Where's Nora? She went up to call Stanley for dinner. Hey, Lori, you want to take a walk on the beach tonight? I have homework. What do you want to walk with me for? Well, you, me, and Nora. I just felt like taking a walk, that's all. I think Nora has a date with Larry Clerman. Larry Clerman? She likes Larry Clerman? I don't know. Ask her yourself. Larry Clerman is my father's age. He's 20. Same thing. <laughs> you think he's good looking? I don't think anybody is good looking. Larry Clerman doesn't even have a chin. His tie comes all the way up to his teeth. You did? You got your father's water yet? I'm coming. I'm coming. Hurry up. Now I've got Larry Clerman to contend with. <laughs> Hey, do you have time to look at my sneaker tonight, Pop? Why does your father want to look at your sneaker? Because it has no soul. It's hanging on by a tiny piece of rubber. I have to clench my doors when I run out for a fly ball. I bought you a new pair of sneakers last month. Last year, Pop, not last month. I can only wear it two hours a day because my toes can't grow in it. Why are you talking to your father about things like that now for? He's good enough on his mind. Go in and turn the light down on the liver. Tonight? You'll rest, eat a nice dinner, and we'll discuss this calm and quietly between the two of us. It'll work it out. I'm feeling better. Come, dear. Help me with dinner. Do you think she'll ever get married? Blanche? She's not an attractive, you know. I've seen men look at her on the beach. What does she want to waste her life in this house for? She's raising two children. If she wants to meet men, I know plenty of single ones. Blanche is the type to get married. She was married once, wasn't she? Those are the types who get married. Dave, you're different. She's not interested in other men. What about that Murphy fellow across the street? He's plenty interested, believe me. That drunk? He can't even find his way into the house tonight. He spent the night on the doorway once. <clears throat> in the rain. He was out there when I went to get the milk. He lives alone with his mother. Got a good paying job. So he takes a drink on a Saturday night. Maybe all he needs is a good woman. Not my sister. Let her find somebody laying on the next doorway. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Liz. Are you busy? I want to talk to you. That's funny. He's already talked to you. Tell me what about. Well, I need a favor. Really bad. You're the only one who can help me. What's the favor? Well, when Pop comes home tired, he usually doesn't pay too much attention to me. He's different with you. He's always interested in what you have to say. Really? Oh, sure. You never noticed that? Not really. What's the favor? Well, at dinner, you think you could send the conversation in a certain direction? What direction? Well, something like how much you admire people who stand up for their principles. What people? Any people. Principles is an important word. If you could work it in three or four times, I'd be very grateful. Three or four times? Yeah, it'll be easy. I'll mention someone like Abraham Lincoln. And you look up and say, now there's a man who really stood up for his principles. I have my own things to talk about at dinner. Why would I want to start a conversation about Abraham Lincoln? Because as of tomorrow, I'm unemployed. Unless someone besides me mentions sticking up for your principles. Really? What happened? Did you get fired? I will unless I write Kaiser Wilhelm a letter of apology. It's really up to my old man. I've decided to do whatever he tells me. When are you going to ask him? Tonight, right after dinner. Tonight? Does it have to be tonight? That's the deadline. I have to give my answer to Mr. Stroh in the morning. Why? Can't you ask your father in the morning? He gets up at 5.30. My mother has to line up his shoes at night because he can't make decisions at 5.30. What's wrong, Laura? You know, I don't know what you have to complain about. At least your father was around the house and alive to make decisions for you. You don't know what he's got to well off. Sometimes you make me sick, Stanley. Chapter 7, The Infamous Dinner. It started out like a murder mystery at Blenheim Castle. No one said a word of it, but everyone looked suspicious. It was so quiet you could hear Lori's soup going down in the esophagus. 
Everyone had one eye on their plate and the other eye on top. Except for me. I sat opposite Nora. I kept dropping my napkin lock so I could bend down to get a good look at those virginal creamy white legs. <laughs> she was really deep in thought because she left herself unguarded a few times. And I got to see halfway up the thighs that led to the golden palace of the Himalayas. <laughs> Stanley knew what I was doing because he's the one who taught it to me. But he was busy with his own problems like everyone else. You could hear the clock ticking in the kitchen. The tension in the air was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. Which is more than I Ketchup. Mustard. Pickles? I'm through. I'll help with the dessert. Finish your liver. I finished. Do you see liver on my plate? You buried it under your mashed potatoes. I know your trick. Look how lonely you ate her. I had a major problem. One more bite and I would have thrown up all over the table. That's a sight no one would have remembered forever. A diversion was my only escape from humiliation. So, how are things going down to Strohheim, Stanley? <laughs> I felt bad about that, but for the moment, attention had shifted away from my work. Someone needs to work in there now. Where? At Strohorns. <laughs> At Strohorns? Uh, let me see. Part time a year and a half before I graduated high school, and a year since then. So what's that? Two and a half years, counting part time. Hmm, and he likes you. Who? Mr. Strohorn. Mr. Strohorn? Yeah, usually he likes me. You get to work on time. Yeah. You get along with other people. Yeah. You do your work. Yeah. So why shouldn't he ask you? Tomorrow morning you go into his office and you ask him for a raise. A raise? <laughs> you don't speak up for yourself. People take advantage of you. Tell him you're worth another five dollars a week. Five dollars? He'll offer you a dollar and a quarter. Just set up for two fifty. I know how these things work. Pop, I don't think this is the time to be asking for a raise. I think his wife is very sick. Are you afraid to ask him? You want me to take you by the hand into his office and say, my little boy wants a raise? I'm not afraid. Stanley, your father wouldn't tell you to ask him if it wasn't the thing to do. It's the right thing to do. <coughs> Mom, I think I have a bone in my throat. <coughs> Nora, how things at a dancing school? Everything's fine at dancing school. Mind your own business. I'm just trying to introduce the subject. Well, I don't need your help. Mom, you two want to be quiet. Nora, you may be cute if you're finished. Did you tell Uncle Jack about the big tank filled with water? Girls? Why, why don't we just let Uncle Jack eat his dinner? If we have something to discuss, we can discuss it later. So what happened at dancing school? Uh, Nora received a very nice compliment from her teacher. Uh, she said Nora had professional potential. He didn't say potential. Potential is the future. Mr. Beckman is interested in Nora's immediate present. Who's Mr. Beckman? He's a very well-known and widely respected producer on Broadway. Broadway, imagine that. And how are you doing in school otherwise? I'm doing good. Very fine. Uh, she's doing very well. I wish I was as smart as she is. Hey, isn't that the same Mr. Beckman who's producing the great Broadway extravaganza, Abracadabra? I heard if a girl gets hired for the course of a show like that, not only is her career practically guaranteed, but the experience she gains is equal to a four-year college education. That's enough, Eugene! Only a four-year college education is equal to a four-year college education. Uh, I don't think Abraham Lincoln went to college. Their problems awake. And you get to hear different recipes. WEAF presents 
Dinner at Brighton Beach, starring the Jacob Jerome family, and featuring tonight's specialty, liver and cabbage. Brought to you by Xlax, the mild flexible. <laughs> well, the whole country's gonna hear a 15-year-old boy gagging on liver. Didn't you have something you wanted to ask from Uncle Jack? Family? No. Jeez. Well, I, I'm through. I'm going to go help with the dishes, OK? Finish the liver! I can't swallow it, Mom. It won't go down. You guys remember the lima bean catastrophe last month? Does anybody want to see a repeat of that disgusting episode? Why does he always have to talk like it's a Sherlock Holmes story? He thinks he's a writer. And just what do you think you are? Eat half of it. Which half? They're both terrible. <laughs> Eat a quarter of it. Two bites. One bite? Two bites. I know you. If I eat one bite, you're going to make me eat another bite. I'll take it up to my room. I'll eat it tonight. I need time to chew it. Eugene needs enough time to waste food. If you didn't want it, you shouldn't have taken it. I didn't take it, Pop. They gave it to me. It comes attached to the plate. <laughs> if it's so important, everybody, I'll eat your liver, Eugene. You will? No one's right. If no one likes it, why do you make it? Because we can't afford a roast beef for seven people! I suddenly felt vulgar and cheap. Sam, turn on me. Nori, get off your feet! You look tired to me. Uh, can I talk to you for a minute? There's something really important. More important than what's going on in Europe? It's not more important. It's just coming up soon. Hitler's already moved into Austria. In a couple of months, the whole world will be in there. Who's been fooling with my radio? Someone's been playing with it, haven't they, Eugene? Why, Eugene? Pop had the news on last night. You weren't listening to the ball game this afternoon? He's talking about Poland, damn it. I don't want anyone fooling about around with this radio anymore. Guess who's going to get blamed for the war in Europe? You really think there will be a war, Pop? I mean, America, too? We're already in it. Not us, maybe, but our friends, relatives. If you're Jewish, you've got a cousin suffering somewhere in the world. Ida Kaczynski's family got out last month. The story she tells, you don't even want to hear them. How many relatives do we have in Europe? Enough uncles, cousins, your father has a nephew. I have a great aunt. I have a cousin, Sholem, in Poland. His whole family. Uh, Gabe had relatives in Warsaw. That's where his mother was born. What if they got to America? Where would they live? Who? Your cousins, moms, nephews, and aunts. Would we take them in? What God gives us to deal with, we will deal with. Where would we put them? Why are you worrying about that now for? Get upstairs and work on your speech. What speech? On how you're going to ask Mr. Stroheim for a raise. Can I talk to you later, Pop, after you've rested and read your paper? Hey, Luke Garrett got two hits today. Lara Finn Lewis hit a 302. Is that your paper? How many times have I told you, don't read it until your father's finished? I didn't break it. The print doesn't come off if I take a quick look at it. Don't be smart with your mother. Upstairs. Pop? Everyone. I'll come down later. Okay, Pop? Come on, Stanley. I have to talk to you anyway. You're a pest. Did anyone ever tell you you're a pest? Yeah, I have a list upstairs. You want to add your name to it? <laughs> what would we do, Kate? What would we do? Where would we put them? How would we feed them? I can't deal with folks that haven't planned it yet. Uncle Jack? I know you're tired and you have a lot of things to talk about and everything, but the rest of my life may depend on your decision. And I have to ask Mr. Beckman and let him know if I can go or not. Who's Mr. Beckman? The Broadway producer we talked about at dinner. Abercadabra, remember? Lori, upstairs, this minute. Nora, not now. This isn't the time. It's never the time. You won't make a decision and I don't have anyone else I can talk to. Well, I'm 16 and a half years old and I'll make my own decisions. What's all this about? Go on, she'll tell you. It's my, I'll take care of it. Nora's right. It's my decision. What are you going to do? Are you going to tell us she can drop out of school? That she can throw away a future? Is that what you're going to do? What if I'm wrong? What if she's not telling? What is it I'm supposed to say? I'm her uncle, for God's sake. She can't talk to me. It's all the same family. She needs a father, not an uncle. Go on. She'll tell you. I never learned. Mind if I sit with you? I wrap my life up in Dave so much, 
I never learned to be their mother. If you want to talk, we'll talk. If not, not. We have enough mothers here. We're a family. The world doesn't survive without family. Laurie, get upstairs and do your homework. Blanche, make me some tea. You're the only one around here who can make some decent tea. Listen, Nora, I know what it's like not to be heard. You do? I was raised in a family with four children. My father, before he died, could never remember our names. My older brother was the big one. I was the little one. My, my brother Eddie was the rotten one. My, my brother Sholem was the skinny one. Well, who am I? The pretty one, of course. What's the problem? I don't know. This is too important now. I've never seen you cry over something that wasn't important. I know I'm not your father, and it's not my place to make decisions for you, but I can offer advice. Advice is free. If you don't like it, you can always return it. Can we take a walk on the block? Sure, we'll take a look at the ocean. My father used to say, throw your problems out to sea, and the answers will wash back up on shore. Did they? Not in Brighton Beach, or in Steel and Watermelons will wash back up. <laughs> That's why it's good to take someone who knows how to give advice. If 
you were a girl, would you like some guy jumping in your face, grabbing your boobs? Well, if I had boobs, I'd love to touch him, wouldn't you? <laughs> I have my own problems to think about, Eugene. Stanley, how do girls do it? I can't explain it. Come on, Stan, tell me how to do it, please. I'll be a slave drummer. Just tell me how to do it. I need a pencil and some paper. I'll do it later. Well, crayons, maybe I'll do it in college. <laughs> <laughs>
You know who George Bernal Shaw is? I don't care who he is. One of the greatest Irish writers in the world. What would you say if, if he took me to Shardoff next Wednesday? Mr. Murphy is a writer? Well, tell him to bring over some books. I'd be more than happy to read them. Kate, when are you going to give up being an older sister? I've heard stories about him. With women. They like their women. I know. But go ahead. Go out with them. Do what you want. I decided to go downstairs and fight my passion for oatmeal cookies. We took a walk along the beach last night. <laughs> he hardly said a word. He's very shy, very quiet. And he told me where his parents came from in Ireland. Their life wasn't any easier than Mama and Papa's in Russia. Nobody had it like they had it in Russia. Nobody. He holds down a decent job in a printer's office, and he didn't smell of liquor. And he behaved like a perfect gentleman. Sir Jane! What? No cookies for you. Not until you eat your liver. You're still saving it? You mean it's going to be in the icebox till I grow up? Eat your liver! I, I just want to... You have water in your bathroom. There's toothpaste in the glass. It makes me nauseous. <laughs> Listen, there's no point in discussing it. Go ahead. Go back with Mr. Murphy. Do what you want. I'm going to bed. Kate! Hey. I don't want to do anything that's going to make you unhappy or jealous. I owe too much to you. I can't live off you the rest of my life. Every decent job I try to get, they turn me down because of my eyes. The thought of marrying Frank Murphy hasn't even occurred to me. Or maybe not even to him. But I don't think one dinner at Shardoff is the end of the world. Well, I just don't want to see you get I can handle anything except if somebody in the family is mad at you. I can never be mad at you, Kate. That I promised to my dying day. All right, go out with Mr. Murphy. If Papa heard me say that, he'd get up from the cemetery and stand in front of my house and say, he's going to beat me with a big stick. Uh, I told him to pick me up here. Is that all right? Here? In my house? Uh, for two minutes. I wanted you to meet him, at least see what he's like. Tell his mother to wash her windows, <laughs> then maybe I'd see what he looks like. Can I see Mr. Beckman tomorrow, yes or no? Uh, did you talk to your Uncle Jack? I talked to Uncle Jack. I want an answer from you, Mother. What did he say? It doesn't matter what he said. Uh, well, Uncle Jack, what, what did you say to him? What did you tell her? I said if I were her father, I'd tell her to finish high school. If she's got talent, there'll be plenty of other shows. I never got past the eighth grade, and that's why I spent half of my life on the subway and the other half trying to earn an extra dollar to keep this family off the streets. He doesn't make decisions, Mother. He offers advice. I want a decision from you. I promise you do what Uncle Jack said. It's your decision or mine. Who's going to make it, Mother? You finish high school. You tell Mr. Begman you're too young. You tell him your mother's bad decision. See. Thank you very much for your advice, Uncle Jack. I'll let you know in the morning what my decision is. What could I tell her, Kate? What could I say? You inherit a family, you inherit their problems. Well, good night. Uh, Put the cookie on the table. What cookie? The oatmeal cookie in your pocket. You can smell an oatmeal cookie from 10 feet away? <laughs> I heard the jar moving. Says everybody in this house is doing what they want. Your father's upset and Blanche is upset. Stop puffing up the pillows. If the house were burning down, you'd run back and puff up the pillows. You're tired, let's go to bed. When does it get easier, Kate? When does life get easier? When you get seven good hours of sleep. That's the easiest you'd ever get. So, what are you going to do? You want me to speak, Mom? <coughs> well, I can't tell you what I'm going to hurt you. Don't do that. Don't be sick to get favors from anyone. I'm not pretending. It's not big flutter.
I talk to you for a minute, Pop? We'll just take five minutes. He's falling asleep. Why would he want to talk? Two minutes. I'll tell him as fast as I can. Go on, Kate. Go to bed. The boy wants to tell me something. All right. Turn out the lights on the turn out the lights in his room and uh, don't worry about things. shouldn't have swept the dirt on his shoes. I know. Especially in front of the other people. I know. He pays your salary. He puts food on our dining table. I know. And we don't have food to waste. Believe me when I tell you that. I believe you, Pop. You were sick three days last year, and he only docked you a day's and a half pay. Remember that? I remember. I, I can see what you're getting at. I'm going to write the letter. On the other hand, you did a courageous thing. You stood up for a fellow worker. No one else did, did they? I was the only one. That's standing up for your principles. See, and that's why I didn't want to write the letter. See, I knew you'd understand it. The question is, can this family afford principles right now? It would make it tough, I know. Not just on you and me, but your mother, Blanche, Nora, Lori, Eugene. Eugene would have to get a part-time job. Time he could be spending studying books to get himself somewhere. He wants to go to college. He wants to be a writer. I wish I could have sent you to college. I've always hated that. I like working, Pop. I really do. Listen, I've made up my mind. I'm going to write the letter. I'm not saying you should. I know. It's my decision. I really want to write the letter. And how will your principals feel in the morning? My principals feel better already. You told me you were proud of me. That's all I really cared about. You know, Stanley, I don't think there's much in college they could teach you that you don't already know. Hey, guess who I learned it from? Thanks a lot for talking to me, Pop. See you in the morning. You coming to bed? I think I'll stay here for a few minutes. It's the only time of day I have a few minutes to myself. So how'd it go? Do you have to write the letter? Yeah. I knew that's what he'd make you do. He didn't make you do it. Be quiet, really. I have to concentrate. What are you going to say? I don't know. Hey, you want to help me? You're good at those things. Well, people used to get paid for that in the old days. Professional letter writers. I'm not going to pay you money. I don't want money. What do you want? Tell me what Norma looks like naked. <laughs> How horny can you get? I don't know. What's the high? 
Elias Hall. <laughs> All right, after we finish the letter. Hey, I don't trust you. I want to get paid first. You know, you're a real shit. Hey, don't talk like that in front of me. I'm just a kid. <laughs> All right, what do you want to know? Everything, from the time you opened the door. It happened so fast. That's OK. Tell it slow. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Well, I heard the shower run, and I waited for it to stop. I gave a few seconds for the water to run off her body. Then I knew she'd be stepping out of the shower. Suddenly, I just opened the door, and there she was on the bath mat with a towel on her head and nothing else in the whole world. Oh. <laughs> so, don't go so fast. <laughs> her breasts were gorgeous, like two cages <laughs> hanging on the vine, waiting to be plucked. <laughs> Maybe nectarines, oh. like two nectarines, all soft and pink, shining in the morning sun. <laughs> all the time. Don't let me see you do it as a bad habit. So how come you do it? 
I like it. What brand do you smoke? Lucky Strikes? Oh, I know you would. That's the best brand. Eugene, swear to God, when I tell you, you're never going to tell a living soul. I take an oath on the life of the entire New York Yankees. What happened? I lost my salary. What? The entire $17. It's gone. I lost it. Where? The subway? In a poker game. I lost it gambling. In a poker game? Shh. You want to kill Dad right in his bedroom? You never told me you gamble. We would just do it at lunch hour for pennies. I always won a dime, quarter. It wasn't just luck. I was really good. Seventeen dollars. I thought I could help out. My dad was sick, you know. So I played in this game over at the stock room with four shine shoes. Boy, did I learn about poker? They cleaned me out in twenty minutes. What are you gonna tell them? I don't know. If Pop wasn't sick, I'd be telling the truth, you know. I mean, he's driving a cab as a not playing poker at four shots. <laughs> yeah, but suppose you won. Suppose you won $50. You just had bad luck, that's all. I had no chance against those guys. They were gamblers. They wore black pointy shoes with clocks on their socks. <laughs> if, if Dad dies, he's swirl. Don't talk like that. Pop isn't going to die. He ate three lamb chops tonight. Hey, why don't you just tell him you lost the money? You had a hole in your pocket. You can tear a hole in your pocket. I already used that one. When? In November. When I lost five dollars, Pop said, from now on, check your pockets every morning. What happened to the five dollars? Did you gamble that too? No. I gave it to a girl. You know, a pro. A pro what? A prostitute? <laughs> you went to one of those places? Holy shit! I'm not going to tell you that that one again. Is that what it cost, Stan? Five dollars? Two fifty. I wonder what this guy is. He's still old. What did she look like? How old was she? Was she pretty? Don't start with me, Eugene. Did she get completely naked or what? Every time I get in trouble, I gotta tell you what a naked girl looks like. <laughs> Eugene, do me a favor. Go in the bathroom, whack off, and go by yourself. <laughs> hey, don't get soft. If you were me, you'd ask the same question. Yeah, well, I, I never had an older brother to tell me these things. I had to do it all by myself. You don't realize how lucky you are to be the younger one. You don't have any of the responsibilities I do. You're still in school looking up girls' dresses on the staircase. Hey, I worked plenty hard in school. Yeah? Well, let me see your report card. Today's the first of the month. I know you have your report card. I want to see it. I don't have to show you my report card. You're not my father. Yes, I am. As long as Dad is sick, I am. I'm the only one in the family who's working, ain't I? Oh, really? Well, where's your salary this week, huh? Sometimes I hate you. You're nothing but a lousy shit. I help you out all the time. You never help me without wanting something for it. I hate your disgusting guts. Not a You snore at night. You pick your toenails. You smell up the bathroom. When I go in there, I have to feel. Give me it. Give me your report card, God damn it! I'll beat your face in. You want it? Here. Here's my last report card. Four A's and a B? That's good. That's really good, Eugene. You're smart. Listen, I want you to I want you to go to college. I want you to be someone in the world someday. Because I'm not. I'm no damn good. Sorry, Sydney.
That child is pampered too much. You should let her do more work around the house. You don't get healthy lying on couches all day. No, you get healthy driving cabs at night after you've worked all day cutting them out of ladies' raincoats. You want to kill yourself? Is that what you want to do? You want to leave me to raise this family by myself? I figure I'll get better faster with a guilt trip. I, I was born with enough guilt. If I need any more, I'll ask you. I'm sorry. You know I'm not happy unless I'm worrying about something. My family are warriors. Warriors usually marry famous. Hey, I'm not going to leave you, I promise. If I haven't left you for another woman, I'm not just going to drop dead and leave you. What other woman? That bookkeeper, Helene. Yes, Helene. Not again with Helene. You're not going to forget that I danced with her two years in a row at the Commodore Hotel? I know she's attracted to you, Jack. I know. What would a woman like that want with a cutter like me? She likes the men that are friends. The salesmen. She's a widow. She's looking to get married. You're an attractive Jack man. Man, Jack, I know. Women like you. Me attractive? You must really think I'm dying. Well, promise me one thing. If anything did happen between you and Helene, let me go to my grave without knowing. So all this worrying about Helene, you decided you're going to die first. I had to chop the ice. All out of breath. It's good for you, darling. It's exercise. She wants you and Lori to meet him. I'm late. Somebody's waiting for me. I can meet Mr. Murphy some other time. I think your mother would appreciate it if you waited for her. She would be very hurt if you didn't wait. You know, I'm sure that's very good advice, Uncle Jack, but I know just how my mother feels. I'm not so sure she knows how I feel. What am I going to do? What am I going to tell Blanche, Jess? Leave it alone. It's something between Nora and Blanche. Something they have to look at. Where does she go every night? Who does she go with? With Larry Clermont. He borrows his father's car and takes him to the cemetery. What cemetery? Where Daddy's buried. She goes to see Daddy. <laughs> what am I going to tell Blanche? Good. Jack? What are you doing down here? We're having company. Where else should I be? I'm not in your room. I got scared to death. Well, you don't look it. You look beautiful. Oh, Blanche. You look great. I think she looks like Blanche. Blanche is prettier than all of them. I had such trouble with the makeup. I couldn't see my eyes to put on the mascara, so I had to put on my glasses. And then I couldn't get the mascara on under the glasses. Where are you, glasses? Oh, they're in my purse. I thought I put them on in the restaurant when I'm looking at the menu. Well, make sure you do. I don't want you coming home telling me you don't even know what it looks like. I'm so glad to see you up, Jack. Then you're feeling better? Yeah, I just needed a rest, that's all. He comes into the house, likes to meet another man. Makes him feel comfortable. Oh, thank you, Jack. That's very thoughtful of you. Why don't I have something for you? Don't say no. Just clean with them. Oh, Kate, your pearls. You got pearls. What are they going to do, sit in a drawer all year? Pearls are like people. They like to get out and be seen. Oh, you were going to wear them to the fair tonight. I'm so wrapped up in myself. I forgot you're missing the fair this year. I can afford to miss it. I don't see Jack there the whole night anyways. <coughs> Let's see how they look. Oh, they look great. Oh, tell me I don't have a beautiful sister. Go on, tell me. Tell me I don't have a beautiful sister. Now I feel good. Definitely Carol Lombard. Uh, Lori, go up and get Nora. I want to show them to Nora. She's not here. She left. What do you mean she left? Without saying goodbye? Well, you know, she had to meet somebody. She, she really wanted to wait to see you. She could have come in my room. She knew I wanted to see her. Blanche, don't worry about it. Get your mind off Nora. Uh, what did she say? Did she say anything? She's 16. She's making me pay for it, isn't she? She knows she can get to me so easily. That's what I get for making decisions. You feel like ice cream, Lori? Butter pecan? Butter pecan for you? Maple walnut for me? 
Go tell um, Eugene I want to go to school. I'll go with him. Don't run. You're all running. Let her run. If she gets tired, she'll tell you. Let's stop worrying about each other so much. Just paid the doctor fifteen dollars. Stanley just got paid today. Go ask Stanley for his other. What? Come here, right at a dollar. Hurry up! So Mr. Murphy can be sorry about the run. You know what I worry about at night? That she'll run off. That when I wake up in the morning, she'll be gone to Philadelphia or Boston or God knows where. Look how the woman's going out on a date. The man's going to start drinking in five minutes flat. You think so? What do I do if he gets drunk? You come home. You got money for car fare? I didn't take anything. I'll go up to Stanley. He got paid today. Now I have something else to worry about. I, I feel like a hot cup of tea. Oh, oh, sit there. I'll make it. We'll both make it. Keep me company.
cried when Dave died. I was angry, angry at God for taking such a young man. Not till now did I think what you must have gone through. How did you handle it, Blanche? I had you, I had Jack, but mostly you live for your children. Your children keeps you going. Mine. I wake up every morning for Nora and Lori. You can say that even after what Nora's done to hurt you. Our parents, you remember how Mama used to cry when Sylvia left home? Sure it hurts, but if you love someone, you forgive them. Some things you forgive, other things you never forgive. Is the ice cream here yet? No, darling. Didn't you go with Eugene? No, I was across the street in the creepy house. It's just as creepy inside. In the Murphys? You were just in there? Why? She called me from the window. The old lady, I think it's his mother. She said she had a letter for you, and I had to go inside to get it. What's it say? What'd she say? She offered me a cookie, but it was all green. Said I was hungry. Dear Mrs. Morton, I send regrets to my son Frank. I tried to reach you earlier, but then realized that you had no phone. Frank will be unable to keep his dinner engagement with you this evening as a result of an automobile accident last night. Although his injuries are not serious, the consequences are. As a devoted mother, I would end this letter here and forward. My Despite all my son's faults, honesty and sincerity have never been his failings. He wanted me to tell you the truth, that while driving a friend's motor car last night, he was intoxicated and was the cause of the aforementioned accident. The truth would come out soon enough, but Frank has too much respect and fondness for you to have you hear from some other source. I hope you will not think I'm just a doting mother when I tell you that my son has a great many attributes. A great many. As soon as Frank can overcome his difficulties here, we've made plans to move to upstate New York, where there's a clinic that can help Frank, and where we have relatives with whom we can stay. Frank sends along with his regrets his regards for a warm, intelligent, friendly, and most delightful neighbor across the way. Yours most respectfully, Mrs. Matthew Morton. What did it say? He's not coming. He's in the hospital. It was a sad letter, all right, but it sure was well written. Hey, maybe I should have been born in Ireland. Didn't I tell you right from the beginning? I knew it. Why in the hospital? He was in a car accident. Oh, God. That poor woman. Does that mean you're not going out to dinner? Didn't I warn you right from the beginning about those people? Stop calling them those people. They're not those people. She's a mother like you and me. And tell me what he is. What is he? He's somebody in trouble. He's somebody who needs help. For God's sake, Kate, you don't even know the man. I know the man. I know all of them. Who are you to talk? Are we any better? Are we something so special? We're all poor around here. The least we can be is charitable. What have I got I can afford to give away? Am I the one that got you all dressed up for nothing? Am I the one that got your hopes up? Am I the one that's going to lock up in jail somewhere? They're going to put him in jail? Charity, anybody else but not me. I never said you weren't charitable. You know, all my life, I've been watching over you. All I've ever did was try to watch over you. I know that, Kate. Nobody cares for their family more than you do. But the least you can be is sympathetic to somebody else in trouble. Who should I be watching out over? Who's out there watching over me? How many beatings did I get because you did something wrong? How many dresses did I go without so you could look like somebody when you went out? How many times have I gone without because you wanted something? I was the workhorse, and you were the pretty one. Don't talk to me about what people, and you know what I mean. No, I don't, Kate. Say what to your mind. What people? You, Celia, Papa when he was sick? Everybody. Don't talk to me about what people. This is all about Jack, isn't it? You're blaming me for what happened. Why do you think that man is sick today, huh? Why do you think he had to be brought home by a police officer at 2 in the morning? So you and Nora could have dancing lessons. So Laura could go to a doctor every three weeks. That's why. Go on, worry about your friend across the street, not the ones that are drug home to give a roof over your head. What is it? What's going on? You mean it took you all those years? It took you something like that letter 
The ice cream is ready. Eugene, put the ice cream in the ice box. I have to talk to your mother. I never even met the woman. She lived at Cox's Street for three years. She's a wood with her. Jack, if you're gonna be walking around, at least sit in a chair. If I could take the girls and pack them out of the house tonight, I would do it. But I can't. I have no place to take them. Don't say such things, Blanche. Stay out of it. Let her do what she wants. If I could leave the girls with you for another few weeks, I would appreciate it. Until I can find a place of my own, then I'll send for them. You're not sending for anyone, and you're not leaving anywhere. I don't want to hear this kind of talk. Mind your own business. I know a woman in Manhattan Beach. I can stay with her for a few days. Uh, then I'll find a job. I will do anything anybody asks me, but I will never be a bird to anyone else again. Stop it. Stop it right now, Blanche. What in the hell is going on here, for God's sake? Two sisters having a fight they should have had 25 years ago? You want to get it out, Blanche? Get it out. Tell her what it's like to live in a house that isn't yours. I know what it's like because I lived that way until I was 21 years old. Tell her what it's like to have to depend on somebody to put food on your plate every night. Go on, Kate. Tell her what it's like to be the older sister. Tell her what it's like to have the shoulder all respect and not get the affection and hugs when you were the only one there. You think I don't see it with Stan and Eugene, with Nora and Lori? You think I don't hear the fights that go on up, on, up in those rooms night after night? Go on, yell at her, scream at her, call her name. Go on, Blanche. Tell her to go to hell for the first time in your life. Then when you've all got it out of your systems, give each other a hug and go have dinner. My lousy ice cream is melting, for God's sake. I love you both very much. No matter what Kate says to me, I will never stop loving her. But I have to get out. If I don't do it now, I'll lose whatever self-respect I have left. For people like us sometimes, the only thing we really own is our dignity. And when I grow old, I would like to have as much as Mrs. Matthew Murphy across the street. What did it, Kate? What happened? Something terrible must have happened for you to act this way. Tell the kids we're eating in 10 minutes. Eugene, <coughs> tell Stan and Lori we're eating in five minutes. It was the first time in my life that I didn't get blamed for what just happened. I felt real sorry for everybody, but as long as I wasn't to blame, I really didn't feel all that bad about things. It was then that I realized I had a selfish streak in me. I sure hope I grow out of it. Aunt Blanche is leaving. For work. She's going to stay with some woman at Manhattan Beach. Her and Mom just had a big fight. I'm going to send for Lori and Nora as soon as she finds a job. What did they fight about? Well, I couldn't hear it all, but I think Mom sort of blames Aunt Blanche for how Tyler it works so hard. Oh, God! Did they say anything about me? About how I lost my salary? You told her? Why didn't you tell her? I came up with 12 terrific lies for you. How much money do you have? Me? I don't have any money. The hell you don't? You got money in your cigar box. How much do you have? I've got a dollar to go, but it's my life savings, Sam. Let me out. I'll pay you back. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> what are you putting on all those things for? In case I have to sleep out tonight. I'm leaving, Jeannie. I don't know where I'm going, but I'll write to you as soon as I get there. You leaving home? When I'm gone, you tell her I'm Blanche with half of my salary. Then she'll know why Mom was so mad. Tell her it was all my fault, not Mom's. Will you do that for me? I've got eight cents worth of stamps if you want those too. Thanks. What's this? It's the metal you won for the 100 yard dash two years ago. From the police out me? I didn't know you still had this. You gave it to me. You can have it back if you want. It's not worth anything. Well, it is to me. Fine. You can keep it. Thanks. Where were you? I don't know. I kind of thought I'd join in the army. The Poxos would probably be in a war in a few years, anyways. Hey. If it lasts long enough, maybe I could join up too. Maybe we'd get the same outfit. You don't come in the army unless they come and get you. You go to college. You understand me? Promise me you'll go to college. I'm probably going to have to quit school and go to work if you leave. I'm going to need the money. I'll send for 
my paycheck every month. It makes pretty good dough in the army. Well, I better get going. What do you have for me, Paul? Paul, start crying. They're going to hear you. They're not going to say mad at you forever. They're going to get over it. I was mad at you. I got over it. Because of me, this whole family is breaking up. You want Nora to end up like one of those cheap boardwalk girls? I don't care. I'm not in love with Nora anymore. Yeah? Well, you should care. She's your cousin. Don't end up to be like me. Hey, I don't think I'm so bad about you. Eugene, I don't want to discuss it, okay? I just got to get home. Take care of yourself. If you ever write a book about me or something, call me. I don't like that man. Well, I guess there comes a time in everyone's life when you say, this very moment was the end of my childhood. When Stanley closed that door, I knew that moment had come for me. I was scared, I was lonely, and I hated my mother and father for making them feel so unhappy. Even if they were right, I still hated them. I even hated Stanley a little for leaving me to go up there all by myself. Laura, Eugene, we're not waiting all night! And I hated her for leaving Stanley's name out when she called us for dinner. I don't think parents realize just how cruel they can be sometimes. Well, at dinner, I tried to explain about Stanley. But I just couldn't get the words out. I left the table without even having my ice cream. If it was suffering I was after, I was beginning to learn about it. It's 10 o'clock. Where's Stanley so late? Don't worry about Stanley. You should have been in bed an hour ago. Why don't you tell me what happened between you and that boy? Jack, I've gone through enough tonight. I don't want to deal with anything else. Go to bed. The house became quieter than I ever heard it before. Aunt Blanche was in her room packing. Mom and Pop went into their bedroom. I had to talk to somebody or else I'd just go crazy. I really didn't have that much choice. <laughs> Lori, it's Eugene. Can I come in? What do you want? I'm reading. I just want to talk to you. I didn't say yes, did I? Well, I'm already in, so it's too late. What do you read? by A.J. Coleman. Oh, I read that. It's terrific. Um, I heard your mom's leaving in the morning. We're going, too. We couldn't find the job. I can't believe it. I'm going to be the only one left here. You mean you and Stanley? Stanley's gone. He's not coming back. I think he's going to join the Army. You mean he ran away? No, only kids run away. When you're Stanley's age, you just leave. He didn't say goodbye. <clears throat> My parents don't even know yet. I was going in to tell them now. I wonder if I'll have to go to a different school. You're going to have to make all new friends. I don't care. I don't have any friends here anyway. That's because you're always in the house. You never go out. I can't because of my condition. You don't look sick to me. Do you feel sick? No. Well, I'm I don't trust parents anymore. Why would you lie to me? To keep you around. When they find out about Stanley, they're going to handcuff me to my bed. <laughs> I wouldn't leave my mother anyway. Even when I'm older, even if I get married, I'll never leave my mother. Oh, yeah? Mr. Murphy across the street never left his mother, and he ended up going to jail. <laughs> None of this would happen if my father was alive. How did you feel when he died? I don't remember. I cried a lot. I saw my mother crying. I would hate it if my father died, especially with Stanley gone. We'd probably have to sell the house. Well, then you and your mom can come and live with us. So if we all end up living together, what's the point of breaking up now? I don't know. I have to finish reading. Well, you don't get too far talking to Lori. Sometimes I think the flutter on her heart is really in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> I went into that bedroom and broke the news about Stanley, the monumental news that their eldest son had run off, probably to get killed in France fighting for his country. My mother said, go to bed. He'll be home when it gets cold out. I couldn't believe it. Their own son. It was then that I suspected that Stanley and I were adopted. <laughs> Finally, they went off the bed. And I waited out on the front steps until I got cold. But Stanley never showed up.
wanted to talk to you. Now? Late. I know it's late. We could have talked earlier if you hadn't come home at 12 o'clock at night. How was dinner? I didn't go. Mr. Murphy was in an accident. Sorry, is he okay? He's got his problems, like the rest of us. I was very hurt that you left tonight without saying goodbye. I was late. Somebody was waiting for me. So was I. You knew it was important to me. Can we talk about this in the morning? I won't be here in the morning. Then tomorrow night? I'm leaving, Nora. I'm moving out in the morning. What? What are you talking about? Aunt Kate and I had a fight tonight. We said some terrible things to each other. Things have been bothering us since we were children. I can't believe this. You mean it's all right for you to leave us, but it wasn't all right for me to leave you? I was never concerned of your leaving me. It was your future I was worrying about. It was my future. Why couldn't I have something to say about it? Maybe I was wrong. I don't know. I never made the decision for the family. Your father did. Everyone always took care of me. My mother, my sister, your father, even you and Lori. I've been a very dependent person all my life. Maybe that's all I was asking for, to be independent. You earn your independence. You don't take it at the expense of others. Would that job even be offered to you if somebody in this family had paid for those dancing lessons and kept a roof over your head and clothes on your back? If anybody's going to pay back Uncle Jack, it'll be me. Doing God knows what, I don't know. But one thing I'm sure of, I'll steal before I let my daughter show that man one ounce of ingratitude or disrespect. So I have to give up the one chance I may never get again, that's it? I have to give up what, what, everything I want. I have to pay for what you couldn't do with your own life. What right do you have to judge me like that? Judge you? I can't even talk to you. I don't exist to you. I tried so hard my whole life to get close to you, but there was never any room. Whatever you had, you gave to Daddy, and when he died, you gave to... What? Finish what you were going to say. I have been jealous my whole life of Laura because she was lucky enough to be born sick. I could, I could never turn the light on in my room or read at night because she was always resting. I could never have friends over on the weekends because she needed a precious sleep. I used to pray that I'd get hit by a car and so I'd have a leg all twisted and crippled. And then just once on a cold rainy night, I could crawl into bed with you and hold you and talk to you until I fell asleep in your arms. Once. My God, Nora. Is that what you think of me? Is it any worse than what you think of me? I'm not going to let you hurt me, Nora. I'm not going to let you tell me that I don't love you or that I haven't tried to give you as much as I gave Lori. God knows I'm not perfect because enough angry people in this house told me so tonight. But I will not be a doormat for all the frustration or unhappiness that you or Aunt Kate or anyone else wants to lay at my feet. I did not create this universe. I do not decide who lives or dies or who's rich or poor or who feels love or who feels deprived. If you feel cheated that Lori gets more than you, then I feel cheated that I have a husband who died at 36. And if you keep on feeling that way, you end up like me, with something much worse than loneliness or helplessness, and that's self-pity. Believe me, there is no leg that's twisted or bent that is more crippling than a, than a human being who thrives on his own misfortune. I'm sorry, Nora, that you feel unloved, and I will do everything I can to change it, except apologize for it. I am tired of apologizing. After a while, it becomes your life's work, and it doesn't bring any money into the house. If it's taking your pain and Aunt Kate's anger to get me to start living again, then God will give me the strength to make it up to you. But I will not go back to being that frightened, helpless woman that I created. I've already buried someone I love. Now it's time to bury someone I hate. I didn't ask you to hate yourself. I just asked you to love me. I do, Nora. Oh, God. Why can't I make it clear to you? I feel so terrible. Why? Because I feel like I ever hurt you, but I still want that job with Mr. Beckman. I know you do. I can't have it, though, can I? How can I answer without you thinking I'm still depriving you? I hope so, Nora. I pray to God it's so. I heard voices. I didn't know who it was. I'm sorry if we woke you up. Nora.
girls have never been a problem before. Those girls never. I'll try to take them on the weekends if I can. It's great. You both can use to get my sleep. Blanche, don't go. I feel bad enough for what I said. Don't make me feel worse. Everything you said tonight was true, Kate. I wish to God you said it years ago. Come on, stay. I'll help you find an apartment if you want to leave. Don't stay with strangers in Manhattan Beach. She's a good friend. Good friends are strangers. Sisters are sisters. I'm afraid of becoming comfortable here. If I don't get out now, when will I ever do it? The door is open. Go when you want. We'll go. We'll look for apartments. We'll find a job. I'll help you bargain. I bargain well with landlords. You wouldn't mind doing that? They see a woman all by herself. They try to take advantage. I'll find out how much the Murphy house is. Couldn't be expensive. She never cleaned it. How interesting. If I live across the street from you, Kate, well, you'll be close enough away that you can shut your own door, but you'll be close enough I won't feel so lonely. Oh, Kate, if I live on the moon, you would still be close to me. Let me go up and tell Jack. He wouldn't go to bed until I came up with some good news. I suddenly felt so hungry. Well, that's because you haven't eaten all night. Come on, I'll make you a scrambled egg. Oh, I'll make them. I'm an independent woman now. With your eyes, you couldn't make the egg in the pan. So Aunt Blanche decided to stay when she was looking for a job. Nora went out to school the next morning. She gave me a big smile, and her legs looked creamy white as ever. Lori was asked to take the garbage out, but she quickly got a flutter in her heart, so I had to do it. Life was back to normal. Eugene, I need flour! How much? A teaspoonful? Stanley never came home last night, and even though Mom didn't say anything, I knew she was plenty worried. She told Pop how Stanley lost the money playing poker, and from the sounds coming from that bedroom, I thought Stanley should forget about the army and try for the foreign legion. <laughs> All of a sudden, the next night about dinner time, Stanley came home. I was never so happy to see anybody in my whole life. Hey, Eugene, where's Mom and Pop? Hi, Stan. Uh, Mom's in the kitchen cooking and Pop's upstairs with his prayer book. If God didn't bring you home, then maybe her potato pancakes would. So what happened? Did you join up? I came pretty close. I passed the physical. One, two, three. I knew you would. They were giving me cigarettes, donuts, the whole sales pitch. I mean, they really wanted me. I'll bet. But then, right as I was about to sign my name, I stopped paying. I put down my hand and I said, thank you, maybe some other time, and walked out. How come? I couldn't do it with Pop. Right now, he needs more than the Army does. I know Mom really didn't mean it when she said she would never forgive me for losing that money. But if I walk out of this family now, maybe she never would. Sheesh. I thought you'd be halfway to training camp by now. But I'm real glad you're home, Stan. Eugene, run back green blats. I need some sugar and some sweet cream. Stanley's home. Make it a two-pound bag. I want to make a chocolate cake. A two-pound bag from Green Box? I'm going to need identification for that. <laughs> I'm all... Staying for dinner? I'm staying as long as you'll let me stay. Why wouldn't I let you stay, Stanley? This is your home. Your father's really upset. I think you owe him an explanation. I think I, you better go talk to him. I was just about to do that. Hey, Pop. How you feeling, Pop? Listen, Pop. I'm really sorry I didn't come home last night. I know it was wrong. I know it probably won't help to say I'll never do it again because I won't. Never, I swear. I've got three dollars. Last night I went over to Dominique's bowling alley and I sent pins till midnight. And they can make another six on the weekend. So that makes nine. I'll get the seventeen dollars back, Pop. I'm not afraid of a little hard work. That's one thing you taught me in life. Hard work in principle. That's the code I'm going to live by for the rest of my life. So if you have anything to say to me, I'd be very happy to listen. Did you read the newspaper today, Stanley? No, I didn't, Pop. There's going to be a, a war, a terrible war. I know. The biggest war the world has ever seen, and it frightens me. We're not over the last one yet, and they're already starting another one. We don't talk about it much in the store with Mr. Stroheim being German and all. My brother Michael was killed in the last war, I told you that. Yeah, he showed me his picture in beautiful. He was only 19. The day he left, 
He didn't look a day older than Eugene. He was killed two weeks after he left. I know. They didn't take me because I was 16, both parents were dead, and I lived with my aunt, aunt Rose and Uncle Maury. They had two sons in the Navy, both wounded, both decorated. Uncle Paul and Uncle Leon, right? He would have been 45 years old this month. He was a handsome boy, good dancer, good athlete, good everything. I idolized him, but he idolizes you. No, he doesn't. He does, believe me. I hear him talking outside with his friends. My brother this, my brother that. Brothers can talk to each other the way fathers and sons never do. Before my brother taught me, I never knew a thing about girls. Isn't it like that with you and Eugene? Yeah, well, I tell him a few things. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you're so close. I missed all that when my brother Michael went away. Anything else? I was planning on apologizing to Aunt Kate and Aunt okay, Blanche. Um, okay, apologize to your mother after dinner. And give her the three dollars. I will. And apologize to your Aunt Blanche. Because she was worried about you too. I will. And you can thank your brother as well. Because he came into my room this afternoon and told me how badly you felt. He almost had himself in tears. The way he pleaded your case, I thought I had Clarence Darrow in the room. Eugene's a terrific kid. Okay, um, go wash up. And tonight, after dinner, I'm taking you in the backyard, and I'm going to teach you how to play poker. Terrific! Did <laughs> Eugene back to my yet? Uh, no. Um... Yeah, he was quiet. Did you sleep? I got enough. I slept at a friend's house. Mom, can I talk to you after dinner? Where am I 